were old friends of General Logan. On their return home from a southern tour, Mrs. Kimball wrote to General Logan stating that she particularly noted the southern women decorating the graves of their dead fallen in battle and suggested to him that as the commander-in-chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, he should have our heroic soldiers, whose lonely graves were many, scattered and unmarked, remembered in the same beautiful way. The general was deeply impressed with the idea. Soon afterward, he wrote Mrs. Kimball thanking her for the suggestion and stating that he felt that such a touching tribute to his dead comrades would undoubtedly meet with general favor. After carefully refle reflecting upon how he should give the matter practical shape, he stated his ideas to General Chipman of the Grand Army of the Republic staff and requested him to formulate them in an order. This order, modified and enlarged by General Logan himself, was issued to the Grand Army of the Republic as order number 11. And May 30th, 1868 was named as the day it should go into effect. The order was generally well received throughout the country and practically obeyed by the Grand Army of the Republic, greatly to General Logan's satisfaction. As evidenced in the following letter to Mrs. Kimball, dated Washington, July 9, 1868. My dear friend, it is very gratifying for me to hear, as I do day after day from my friends, of the reception of my order number 11. As you observe, the custom is a beautiful one and I am confident that it will not only never pass away from the recollection of the American people, but will more deeply engraft itself in their hearts. And each returning anniversary of sacred decoration will increase the impressive devotion of our patriot dead and the crowns we weave for them of never fading laurel and the beautiful flowers strewn over their graves give birth to the sentiments of love and honor which bind the past the present and the future in one continuous chain of admiration that the life and service of even the humblest private shall never be forgotten. Yours truly, John A. Logan.